for the session. Dr. Swapnarani Bora, uh, she completed Masters in Cultural Studies from Tejpur University and in Assamese from Guwahati University. After getting UGC GRF, she completed her PhD from Dibrugarh University and joined as Assistant Professor in Teaching uh, Learning Center, Tejpur University in 2016. It is a center of excellence in curriculum and pedagogy under the uh, Ministry of Education, Government of India. And here she works in different areas of professional development of teachers by providing various national level trainings, workshops, etc. Her areas of interest are ICT in teaching learning and Assamese pedagogy. So may I have the pleasure to welcome ma'am and proceed with the presentation. A warm welcome to you ma'am. Thank you so much uh, Zoshita Goswami uh, from uh, Department of Sociology Dibugar University. It is a privilege to be present here in front of the research scholars, faculty members, students from different disciplines, uh, from various institutions. And uh, I want to thank uh, at the very outset, Department of Sociology, Dhokwa Khanna College, uh, which is organizing this FDP on academic writings and different uh, related aspects. So uh, here in this uh, session, I would like to discuss about open access publishing and initiatives. So uh, maybe the very uh, outset, I would like to uh, confess one thing that my role just here to provide an introduction to the concept of open access, what it is, how it works and why it is a good thing. And I realized that some of you may already be acknowledged in this area. So my apologies if you are very familiar with what I am covering here. And uh, here I have uh, one presentation and let me share my screen with you. Uh, I hope my presentation is visible to all. Yes, ma'am. So let me begin the slide show first. Okay, this is my presentation on open access publishing and initiatives. And uh, here the outline will be like this. What is open access? Back to basics, I will give some uh, definition of the key terms, open access, and then we'll discuss about the paths to open access, recent developments in scholarly publishing, and the key developments. And I will focus on some of the repositories and journals, which are uh, uh, related to the discussion of um, the given presentation that is given to me. So basically, what is when we talk about the term open access, what is meant actually? So you can see here one definition by the Budapest Declaration of Open Access Initiative is like this. So uh, can I just, I'm a very new in, uh, in a Zoom platform, so okay, it's now okay. So uh, let me just read the open access definition. We mean it's free availability on the public internet, permitting any users to read, download, copy, distribute, print, search, or link to the full text of these articles, crawl them for indexing, pass them as data to software, or use them for any other lawful purpose without financial, legal, or technical barriers, other than those inseparable from gaining access to the internet itself. The only constraint on reproduction and redistribution and the only role for copyright in this domain should be to give authors control over the integrity of their work and the right to be properly acknowledged and cited. There are so many key terms we can see. And uh, for example, read, download, copy, distribute, print, indexing, financial, legal, technical, etc., and so many uh, terminologies that we are coming across. And all these actually describe some of the permission or some of the copyrights that 
do the name uh, itself indicate as open or free, but this is not actually open, but with some acknowledgement or with some author control over the integrity of the work that they are publishing. So here uh, with the same definition, we can uh, also discuss it like a work to be recognized as open access, the copyright holder must consent in advance to let users, this uh, within code that I'm giving here, copy, use, distribute, transmit and display the work publicly. And these will be gratis and libre, I will discuss uh, later on. And to make and distribute derivative works in any digital medium for responsible purpose, subject to proper attribution of authorship. For example, if we buy one uh, hard copy, one book from any store, then we can see that there is one copyright. It may be for the author or it may be to the owner or the publisher. So the same way in some open access in the digital medium, the authorship of copyright holder has must have the consent in advance to let the users so that they can copy, they can use the material, they can distribute or transmit or display the work in public domain. For example, uh, if we want to uh, use any, uh, any derivative materials of others in public domain like YouTube, we must have to ensure about the proper attribution of authorship that the particular one person is responsible for as author of this particular uh, course or particular paper. So what is gratis and libre? It's written here to remove access and price barriers, remove permission barriers. So what are gratis and libre? It is described here in open source that Gratis is information that is available free of charge, uh, while uh, some copyright and licensing restriction may still apply. Uh, the gratis open access is some digital information which is available free of charge. We, we don't have to pay any cost for that, but there are some copyrights as we have said already and licensing restrictions. And uh, for, I think all of our researcher and uh, faculty members already uh, know very uh, the information about the copyright. For example, the Creative Commons, the copyright for sharing, you can see the symbols. Uh, for example, in this picture, though it is not very prominently visible, but you can see that the, uh, the image is not uh, my own creation. As I have given the reference here, also, the image itself said that it is uh, the author has already announced the authorship that it is it can be shared with others. For it is the same uh, gratis open access and the licensing restriction may still apply. For example, if you want to publish something for free of charge, still we have to apply the licensing restriction into that particular uh, text. The library open access is information that is free of charge and free of most copyright and licensing restrictions. So there are two types of open access are available as it says that it is free of charge and free of most copyright. For example, if we use some type of publishing documents, we do not uh, take talk about these kind of symbols or most of the copyright uh, questions are not arised here. Uh, here it is uh, one has to be concerned about the free term this term implies that the information does not cost anything to access one must have to remember that open access publishing still often involves a cost to the author to publish the work so let us go to discuss about why do we need open access first of all if we talk about why we need open access, we can say that to understand why we need open access, we need to consider the current way in which research is disseminated. Traditionally, the outcomes of research have been disseminated via articles published in either journals or conference proceedings. This means that scholarly research is not freely accessible to all. As journals have traditionally been based on a subscription model 
whereby only those who pay can only access these materials. This means that access is not equitable, but it, it is based on ability to pay. And the consequences of the way in which the scholarly communication model work is that the results of research are not disseminated as widely as they could be. And here you can see that scholarly research is not freely accessible under the traditional model of subscription-based journals. And the uh, inequitability of access and the based on ability to pay is always related to the publications worldwide. And research is not being disseminated as widely as it could be. So therefore, we need the open access publications so that the worldwide dissemination of those journal articles, conference papers, seminars, or any scholarly output has to be disseminated worldwide by any researchers or any student. The, uh, the way that open access can be achieved, there are traditionally two ways, okay? The one is the green uh, route, via deposit in an open access repository or the other one uh, with the gold access. Some commercial publishers now also offer the option to pay to make an individual article open access. I think you all have come across the term of predatory journals that we need to look upon those. I will not discuss the, about the predatory journals, but we have to check when we go to deposit and uh, in an open access repository, or we want to publish in an open access journal, we need to talk or we need to sign with the commercial publishers. So they uh, offer the option to pay to make the individual, their article open access. So there are, though these are open access, these are called the hybrid journals, which actually the subscription is needed for uh, to achieve the open access. So what are these green and gold we will discuss now. But before that, let us discuss about the crisis of scholarly communication, which is related to uh, the, uh, the articles and uh, the journals provided by the universities and institutions. So there are access are, are disseminated by three domains, three aspects. One is scholar, the second one is publishers, and the third one is library. So when all are interconnected, and we can see that when scholars uh, had to pay for a gold root open access journals, here articles are freely available in peer review open access journals, but they need to have to pay something. And uh, in some open access, we see that uh, there are articles freely available in repositories where the uh, author or the researcher deposit the articles themselves in the repositories and which are discoverable on the internet. So these are the two routes that researcher or uh, publisher can publish the documents and which are disseminated by the libraries through these two routes. How do you participate in open access as a researcher? As already said, the gold route and green route are the two routes that a, part, uh, a person as a researcher or as author can participate in the open access repository. So we can take one example from directory of open access journals. For example, if we identify a reputable open access journal in this directory, then we can send our paper for peer review. If the paper is accepted, you may have to pay an article processing charge to the publisher. And when your paper is published, then uh, the open access journal will be available over the internet. And in the uh, directory of open access journal, we can see that there are more than 16,000 journals are available over uh, 80 languages of the world and uh, more than 130 countries are taking part in these directory and 6 million articles are, uh, you can search in this directory and the full text uh, open access journals are available in the 
list. And what happened through the green route? When you submit a selected paper in a selected uh, journal as per the normal ones, and the paper will be accepted after the peer review. And if you have to submit finally the peer reviewed copy to an open repository. For example, uh, IISC has its own institutional repository or for others. Nowadays, uh, most of our institutions have the open repository when, where we can submit the final peer review articles or journals. And the metadata of record will be picked up by Google. Anyone can find your article via Google and here, you don't have to pay the fee for publication. And here we can uh, self archive our journals and our publications, for example, in Serpa Romeo. Okay, serpa.ac.uk Romeo, you can check. It is a, a repository or you can, it's a database. And uh, here, uh, the acceptable versions and not the journal formats, uh, uh, formatted versions to be archived in the repository. Only the acceptable version means the final peer reviewed copy will be archived in the repository. Accepted version is your final manuscript after peer review. Most publishers allow this version to be made available via your institutional repository. So it has a connection with the copyright policies and self archiving. You can also copyright your own article and uh, your own content by going through the Creative Commons licensing. If you go through all the uh, Creative Commons licensing tools or symbols, then you can find out what uh, symbol you want to um, gain from all the Creative Commons symbols. And typically, the publishers allow with embargo period that that's a period uh, there in six months to two years, you have to wait for getting archive of your own final publication. So these are the two routes that you can uh, publish your open access uh, article or you want to view uh, either over the internet or in one open access journals. And there are some differences between the uh, green versus gold open access. Green open access may not be available immediately due to publisher embargo. As we have said that you have to have wait uh, from uh, six months to two years. It is no doubt free and cost effective solution. And the complexity of green open access is when, where, and what version of the paper can be made open access has led to it being ignored by researchers. For example, if, if you cannot search uh, in its Google, there are a lack of Res results come out when you search for any publications or any of the domain knowledges, then it is, uh, uh, there is no such uh, di directory or repository available of uh, fixed links will not be shown by Google. Okay, it's available over the internet, but the complexity is when, where, and what version of a paper can be made open access is not clearly mentioned other than the directory of open access journals, for example. And in gold open access journals like DOAZ, it may involve an article processing charge for the author, which is uh, uh, required by from the publisher. And it's immediately available with reuse rights. For example, I have already mentioned the Creative Commons license. Okay, so let us proceed with our, I hope uh, this is clear or it's just an introduction about the, uh, the, the basic guidelines or basic introduction about the open access. If something is missing or something is repeated, please let me know or you can also uh, stop me in between if you have any queries or uh, any comments. So there are some open access resources available for researchers and students. And uh, these directories, open access and free journals are available by the DOAZ or a directory of open uh, access repositories, directory of open access books and disciplinary archives. You can see that some medicine or science subject or engineering subject has these type of uh, domains where open access resources are available. 
and publishers and distributors are also there for Public Library of Science, Biomed Central, uh, PubMed Med Central, Skilo, Willy Open Access Journals, High Wire Press, PRJ, Says Open, etc. And these are for interdisciplinary subjects where you can find uh, some of the open journals. And there are databases and networks for uh, the open access journals. Why, what is database and networks? For example, Digital Common Network. This is a database of uh, all the open access journals, books, some contents from video or any medium you can find in these databases. And also free ebook on open access, for example, DOAB is one of a kind where you can find the directory of the open access books. And there are some open access search tools are also available. Nowadays, the researchers already explore uh, most of the uh, available networks and those search tools, for example, Unpaywell. And here content from open repositories run by different universities, governments, open content hosted by publishers and scholarly societies are included in this platform. OSGF is an open access journal finder where you can find uh, discipline specific open access journals. One find R is for analytics and discovery platform and it aims to find all peer reviewed articles, green, gold and hybrid open access articles. As I have already discussed that hybrid is, it, it, you have to have one subscription for the journal or that article and a paid for service with it free version. Though it's called a free, but here you can see that there are some uh, uh, paid uh, remuneration or paid uh, uh, amount is uh, claimed by the publisher. And we will also discuss about the author identification. If you, uh, uh, you, you are using your uh, contents and you want to publish in open access journals and books, then sometimes what happens, the researcher need to have their own unique identification number. For example, in any of the uh, commercial equipments or any of the commodities that we are using in our day-to-day -day life, we know that there is one number called ISI number, okay? Uh, international standard number. Like that, the authors also need one specific uh, identification number where uh, the person need to be identified by himself or herself and within the research communities they will identify with that unique number given by the international uh, standard uh, identification community so uh, by going through that channel uh, we will go back uh, again with the author identification after the discussion is over and there are also, we can uh, say, some guidelines are also stipulated by UNESCO where you can see that the, the, there are different guidelines for open access and how to create and how to put your copyright marks or licensing, Creative Commons licensing for the, uh, your own copyrighted material or your open access material. So let us go to the open uh, author identification, uh, which will lead us to the website of Reaping FPB uh, Works. Okay, so here in this space, uh, I will give the uh, link of uh, this platform or website uh, in your chat box later on. So here you can see the different type of author identification are available based on uh, different standards of writing. So here you can see that international standard name identifier is there and you all already know that ORCID. So you can find ORCID also here, uh, open researcher and contributor ID. So it's hosted by Thomson Reuters, but it appears to be a collaborative initiative with stakeholders, including all the major publishers uh, like Thomson Reuters. Um, and ORCID initiative represents a community effort to establish an open independent registry that is adopted and embraced 
as the industry's de facto standard. So these unique open researcher and uh, contributor ID is needed to resolve the systematic uh, name which can be found by assigning the unique identifiers which is linkable to one individual research output and to enhance the scientific discovery process and improve the efficiency of funding and collaboration. So other than the ORCID, we can check here that there are other national systems are available that has developed author identification systems like digital author identifier, it's from Netherlands. Frida is a Norwegian national research database. This online is from Germany, it's from New Zealand. Uh, Zpris, it's uh, uh, provided by uh, internal processes only and it's uh, need your uh, permission. And uh, this is from Australia and research and name resolver is from Japan. It's like that. And uh, there are so many, uh, you can check from this uh, list and why we need, uh, we can also go for, for example, Scopus author identifier. If you are publishing your document in Scopus index journals, then you can also apply for the Scopus author identifier, which is provided by Elsevier. And Thomson Reuters distinct author identification system. You can also check this, how you can go for application from the uh, proprietary system for author identification that has been developed by publishers. So these are different um, uh, information regarding the author identification and why we need, we need because so that there is no ambiguity, ambiguity is arise and uh, for, funding from the publishers and also it, it is a part of the uh, uh, the scientific discovery process so that they can enhance the research outputs or uh, so that it can be linkable to an individual research outputs so in uh, any of your research contribution or open access content, you can be identified by the ORCID ID or Scopus ID. So here we will uh, again discuss about the some of the uh, websites. For example, let us uh, discuss about the DOAZ directory of open access journals. This is the platform of DOAZ. Here you can see that already we have talked about the 80 languages and 11,000 journals without FECs, okay? This is author uh, price uh, uh, publishing charges uh, applied and without author publishing charges, you can find 11,841 journals are available. And other than that, 16,000 journals are available in this directory and 6 million, more than 6 million articles are recorded in this directory. And why DOAZ we're talking about? Because it is a community curated online library that indexes and provides access to high quality open access and peer reviewed journals. Therefore, it is uh, uncomparable with, incomparable with other uh, publishers or other journals indexing. So it is the uh, website of the DOSD, and you can also check the DOAB for the open access books. So regarding the uh, uh, different type of uh, UNESCO's open access policies, you can also check the UNESCO open access publications website. And here you can check the policy guidelines for the development and promotion of open access. If you click in this document, you can check the Berlin Declaration of Open Access, why it was actually initiated and what it is. So here you can also get the definition of open access and how it is considered for open access to be called as open access. And uh, again, you can check the open access policy and guidelines for uh, development and production of open access materials. And uh, 
if you visit the Cornell Library, uh, University Library, you can see the author rights resources. There are some author rights. And to introduce with what type of author rights actually you need to have, you can check some of the basic introductory videos. Uh, why are you able to give copies to your students? Why are you able to include uh, your uh, uh, contents for digital archive? So this type of introductory videos are available. You can also check these uh, websites. And uh, other than that, uh, if you uh, have to have more discussion on green or gold open access, and if you want to uh, publish your document and send your publishing documents to Springer Nature, then you can also check the differences between the gold open access and green open access they are actually providing based on the timing, version, location and discoverability, integrity of scientific record, licensing, what type of license it actually have. You can see here that in the gold open access, the licensing is CC BY. For example, if you only share and allows user to build on, adapt and share onwards. Or uh, in the uh, green, you can see that rights reuse may be limited here, which is very contrary to other open access journals options. So like this, you can also check the path to open sciences and viability of full open access uh, given by without APCs or not, it's all are discussed here. So uh, more or less, uh, my presentation is over here. And uh, I think uh, uh, you have a very basic idea about the guidelines and uh, the open access contents where you can publish your contents. Uh, then uh, open access and the future of academic publishing is a survey here. It's a survey, though it is a, a older one, but we can use because the future of open access is um, described by a Springer Nature when they done a survey of libraries, explore opinions on the tradition of open access and 91% of the respondents agree that open access is the future of academic and scientific publishing. So the number is growing um, in, um, gradually. And we can see that the respondents are satisfied with the speed of movement of research data, scholarly books, scholarly articles, and where the articles are, should be made uh, accessible via open access or not. So they are responding in these ways and the optimum use of journals and optimum use of research outputs are they're uh, saying the positive way regarding the open access is the future of our uh, intellectual properties like um, our research journals and our research outputs. So here with this presentation, I would like to conclude and if you have any questions, so all are welcome. Thank you so much, Pam, for your uh, thought-provoking lecture. So this has been a very informative session. Uh, now we have the interactive session. So if you have any queries, you can ask Pam by writing your questions in, the, in your chat box. See the networks and the journals and the indexings all are available throughout the internet. We need to have to explore those internets over the internet about the directories, about the books and open access journals. We need to explore. But here I'm just giving one introduction about the uh, platforms that they're providing and what are the benefits of this open access. Now, I don't know how much it is understandable, but uh, in a very basic manner, I just uh, given one introduction about the open access and uh, how it is achieved.
kindly write your queries in the chat box, please. Uh, thank you, Akid Ahmed. If you have any question, you can directly unmute your microphone. Okay, may I know your disciplines, if any participant come forward and say their disciplines that uh, it will be better to use if I have uh, included or not. Though I have included the multidisciplinary journals in the name of uh, the open access journal names, but uh, there may be more that you are uh, exploring, which is not uh, given here in my presentation. There are numerous journals and uh, repositories and books. I don't know if the participants are listening to me or not. If any response comes, then I can be sure that you are listening to my lecture. Uh, yes, uh, other than DOAZ, I think uh, you can see in my presentation that uh, I have given some names like Unpaywall. In Unpaywall, you can check the uh, contents hosted by different publishers and scholarly societies. And OAZF for uh, Open Access Journal Finder. This is a pub, uh, uh, link of uh, these uh, I can give you, uh, OAZF. Uh, to find different type of uh, doab.org, doab books, or for example, ssrn.com for different multidisciplinary uh, journals and says open, okay, you can uh, go for checking the says open.com uh, if you want to Roy is asking where can get the list of I think my connection can you is okay. unmute your mic? Okay, just uh, yes. my connection was interrupted. So please uh, go to the UCC website or you can search in Google for the commerce career list journals. So there are some fake lists are also available. Please uh, mind it. So you need to be concerned about which are the uh, real career list journals. So just you need to check in the UCC website itself. Any more question? Uh, 
uh, if no more questions then i think uh, i don't know how much it's clear but uh, thank you to the participants who are responding in the chat box that uh, uh, it's a very basic introductory one and those who are uh, very new in this area this is actually uh, will be helpful for them to identify what other green route what uh, are the uh, gold route and how, how the hybrid journals can be subscribed or without any subscription how we can go to, to find the uh, open access journals for example through the directory of open access journals Thank you, ma'am, for answering the questions. Uh, we are highly indebted to Dr. Swaknarani Bora, ma'am, for her valuable presentation and clarification. Uh, in spite of your busy schedule, you agreed to join us, especially in this pandemic situation. So it means a lot to us, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, so this concludes the second session of the fourth day FDP program. Thank you all for attending. We hope we have learned and enjoyed the program. We will meet again on the next day. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you to all and thanks to all the participants who are very passionate.